Thank you for joining today's briefing on data released today by the National Center for Education Statistics, or NCES, from the National Teacher and Principal Survey, or NTPS. The National Teacher and Principal Survey is a system of related questionnaires that provide descriptive data on the context of public and private elementary and secondary education, in addition to giving local, state, and national policymakers a variety of statistics on the condition of education in the United States. Briefing you on the highlights from the NTPS and answering your questions will be Dr. Morris Spiegelman, a statistician in the NCES Sample Surveys Division and the study director for the National Teacher and Principal Survey. Dr. Spiegelman joined NCES in 2015 and has 15 years of experience in education research. She holds a PhD in survey methodology from the University of Maryland. And a note that a recording of today's briefing will be available on the NCES YouTube channel at EdNCES. Dr. Spiegelman, please go ahead. Thank you so much. This is Characteristics of Public and Private K-12 Schools, Principals and Teachers in the United States, results from the 2020 to 2021 National Teacher and Principal Survey. The data I'll be sharing today come from three different reports which were released this morning, and these provide some key findings from surveys of schools, principals, and teachers during the 2020 to 2021 school year, and I'll share some of the findings that are included in these reports. These cover findings on a variety of topics, and I'll provide data including the teacher's workload exceeded the number of hours they were contracted to work, and that they spent fewer hours delivering instruction to students. I'll discuss how teachers and principals influence over school policies differs across different activities. I'll provide information about increased difficulty that schools had when trying to fill teaching vacancies and how the availability of supplemental instruction outside of the school day for students who need academic assistance varied across states. The data in these reports is from the National Teacher and Principal Survey or NTPS, which collects data on K-12 schools from the perspectives of public and private school teachers and administrators. We collect information that isn't available through administrative records and can only be obtained from teachers and principals themselves. When we select a school for the NTPS, we send a questionnaire to that school, another questionnaire that's specifically for the principal to complete, and we select a sample of teachers from that school to complete our teacher questionnaire. These reports provide a snapshot of the 2020 to 2021 school year, the first full school year since the start of the coronavirus pandemic. The NTPS allows for comparisons over time. It was conducted in the 2015-16 and 2017-18 school years, and comparable data has been collected since the 1987-88 school year under a program known as the Schools and Staffing Survey. So for some questions, we can look at trends over the past 35 years. The study is designed to be representative both nationally and for different school characteristics. So for every statistic in these reports, we include national estimates, estimates for traditional public and public charter schools, as well as private schools, including Catholic schools, other religious and non-sectarian schools. We also have data here for school characteristics, such as whether a school is located in a city, town, suburban, or rural area, the grade levels taught at the school, such as whether it's in elementary, middle, or high school, and school size. The study can also produce estimates for each of the 50 states and D.C. for the public sector, and I'll share some of that data today. For our 2020 to 2021 collection, we sampled just under 10,000 public schools and their principals, and in those schools, we sampled 68,000 teachers. In addition, we sampled about 3,000 private schools and their principals, as well as 8,000 private school teachers. So first, I'd like to present information about the teacher and principal workforce. The reports include demographic profiles of the public and private school teacher workforce. For example, about 80% of public school teachers are white and not Hispanic, 9% are Hispanic, and 6% are black and not Hispanic. About 83% of private school teachers are white and not Hispanic, 8% Hispanic, and 4% are black and not Hispanic. About three quarters of teachers are females. The average age is 43 in public schools and 45 in private schools. And regular full-time teachers have an average base salary of about $61,600 in public schools and $46,400 in private schools. 
The reports also include profiles of principals. For example, about 77% of public school principals are white and not Hispanic, 10% black and non-Hispanic, and 9% are Hispanic. About 83% of private school principals are white and not Hispanic, 6% black and non-Hispanic, and 6% Hispanic. 56% of public school and 63% of private school principals are female. On average, they're close to 50 years old. And principals have an average salary about one of about $105,900 in public schools and $78,600 in private schools. Now I'll share a few findings on teacher and principal working conditions. Both public and private regular full-time teachers spent 52 hours each week on all school-related activities in the 2020 to 2021 school year. This included 25.2 hours delivering instruction for public school teachers and 24 hours for private school teachers. And you can note here that their contracts required an average of 38.4 hours of work for public school teachers and 39.3 hours for private school teachers. This map shows the total number of hours that public school teachers work each week in different states. Nationally, this is 52 hours, and it ranged from 48.2 hours per week in Rhode Island to 54.7 hours in Texas. For public school teachers, we can also compare these findings to an earlier NDPS collection in the 2015-16 school year. Regular full-time teachers were contracted to work more hours in the 2021 school year than in the 2015-16 school year. They spent fewer hours delivering instruction to students and fewer hours working in total. So for example, public school teachers provided 27.4 hours of instruction to students each week in 2015-16, which decreased to 25.2 hours in 2021. Now looking at principals work weeks, in a typical school week in the 2021 school year, public school principals spent 58.3 hours per week on all school related activities, and private school principals spent 54.5 hours per week. Here you can also see the relative proportion of their time spent on different types of activities. So for example, principals spent nearly one third of their time on internal administrative tasks. And for public school principals, we can compare these findings to an earlier NTPS collection again in the 2015-16 school year. We see that public school principals spent relatively less time on curriculum and teaching related tasks in the 2020-21 school year compared to 2015-16 and they spent relatively more time on student and parent interactions in the 2021 school year than compared to 2015-16. We see that regular full-time public school teachers had a base salary of $61,600, and this was $46,400 for private school teachers. Many of these teachers also earned income from other sources. For example, 40% of public school teachers received income from extracurricular or additional activities in their school system, and 17% had a second job outside of the school system during the school year. We asked teachers about their autonomy in the classroom and the degree to which they had control over different activities. Most teachers indicated that they had at least minor control over many different areas, such as evaluating and grading students and selecting teaching techniques. In public schools, 86% of teachers had at least minor control over selecting content and topics taught in their classrooms and 84% had at least minor control selecting textbooks and other instructional materials in their classrooms. For each of the areas shown here, a higher percentage of private school teachers than public school teachers reported that they had at least minor control in their classrooms. We also asked teachers about the degree to which they had any influence over policies at their school. About 85% of public school teachers reported that they had at least minor influence over school policies for establishing curricula, and about half had at least minor influence over school policies on budget and teacher evaluation. We also asked principals to rate the level of influence that they hold over decisions concerning different activities at their school. Most reported that they had a major influence on decisions related to teaching evaluation and hiring. In public schools, 35% of principals had a major influence on decisions about establishing curricula at their school. About 65% of private school principals had a major influence on decisions about establishing curricula. Now I'll share some findings on school operations. In the 2020 to 2021 school year, both public and private schools faced challenges filling vacancies in different subject areas. 
For example, among schools with vacancies in special education, a bit over 40% of public and private schools either, either found it very difficult or were unable to fill those vacancies. And this held for other subject areas as well, among schools with vacancies in biology or life sciences, for example, just over 30% of public and private schools either found it very difficult or were unable to fill those vacancies. Looking at special education again, we saw that 40% of public schools with vacancies in special education either found it very difficult or were unable to fill those positions. And here you can see that this varies across states. Um, it was 40% nationally, and it ranges from 12.1% in Kentucky to 65.7% in Alaska. Compared to the 2015-16 school year, public schools found it more difficult to fill vacancies in general education, special education, English and language arts, social studies, and computer science. For example, 31.4% of public schools with special education vacancies found it very difficult or were unable to fill those positions compared to 40.2% in the 2021 school year. Public schools also found it more difficult to fill vacancies in foreign languages and in music or art in the 2021 school year than in the 2015-16 school year. Before the start of the coronavirus pandemic, 29% of public schools and 17% of private schools normally offered at least one online class to students. And we also have a report from earlier this year that presents data on how schools changed these offerings in the spring of 2020 in response to the coronavirus pandemic. A higher percentage of public schools offered supplemental instruction for students who need academic assistance or seek academic advancement or enrichment. For example, 48.5% of public schools offered instruction beyond the school day for students who need academic assistance compared to 35.3% of private schools. And for public schools, this map shows the percentage that offered instruction beyond the school day for students who need academic assistance. 48.5% of all public schools offered this instruction, and this ranged across states from 20.8% in Mississippi to 63.8% in New Mexico. And on a different topic, we saw that the school day began at an average time of 8.13 a.m. for public schools. And this did vary by school level. So for example, a higher percentage of public secondary and high schools had start times before 7.30 a.m. when compared to elementary schools, middle schools, and schools with combined grades. So about 9% of public secondary and high schools began before 7.30 a.m. So that was a lot of numbers. I just want to reiterate some of those highlights. We found that teachers worked more hours than they were required to by contract. Full-time teachers worked about 52 hours per week compared to 38 or 39 contracted hours. And compared to the 2015-16 school year, they spent fewer hours delivering instruction to students. That was 27.4 hours in 2015-16 compared to 25.2 hours here. We saw that staff influence over policy varied for different types of activities. For example, 85% of public and 96% of private school teachers had any influence over school policies establishing curriculum, and 35% of public and 65% of private school principals said that they had major influence over decisions establishing their school's curriculum. We saw that schools had increased difficulty filling teaching vacancies compared to five years earlier. For example, for schools with vacancies in special education, 31% found it very difficult or couldn't fill positions in the 2015-16 school year compared to 40% in 2021. Nationally, 49% of public schools provided instruction beyond the school day for students who need academic assistance. And we saw that across the country, this ranged from 21% to 64% in different states. So I'll share our plans for NTPS and other related studies about what's coming up next. These reports contain just a fraction of the data that's collected in the NTPS questionnaires. I also noted earlier that our collections are designed to be representative of states for public schools and affiliation for private schools. And we will release tables with those breakouts for everything that's presented in these reports. We also will be releasing findings from other survey items that we weren't able to include in these reports. 
And that includes data on student loans held by teachers, out-of-pocket spending on school supplies, the prevalence of in-field teaching, teachers and principals' job satisfaction, the presence of mental health staff in schools, principals' educational priorities, and other topics. There's a lot of data in the questionnaires. We also have upcoming data on teacher and principal attrition. After we collected data from teachers and principals in the NTPS during the 2020 to 2021 school year, we reached out to them one year later in the 2021 to 22 school year to find out whether they were still working at the same school, had moved to a different school, or had left the profession. And we will publish reports on principal and teacher attrition, which includes detailed findings on teachers' career paths next year. So thank you very much. Um, we have all of this information and more on our website. So thank you.